If you're looking for a NoSQL database option in Rails, Mongoid is an excellent choice, and with version 3 recently released, it is now better than ever. Here I'll cover the basics of Mongoid while building a new Rails app. First, we need to install the database, MongoDB. There are some instructions on the site for installing on a variety of platforms. Now if you're on macOS 10, I recommend using Homebrew with brew install MongoDB. Once that's done, some instructions are provided for starting it up. I'll just run this command to start it up manually. If you want to ensure it's up and running, try visiting localhost port 28017, and you should see this web interface provided by MongoDB. So with that set up, I'm going to generate a new Rails app, I'll call it Store, and because I want to use Mongoid instead of Active Record here, I'm going to tell it to skip Active Record, so this way it won't load in the framework or generate any files such as a database YAML file. There we go, then I'll open up that app. Next, I'll go into the gem file and add in Mongoid. And I want to make sure that we use the most recent version, so that is currently version 3.02. And don't forget to run the bundle command to install it. Now the gem provides a generator which you can use to generate a config file and run this command to create that file. Now I'm going to leave the config options at their default, but the file is very nicely commented, so check it out to see all the different options you can pass in. Next, I want to generate some scaffolding for this app uh, for a product resource. And this will have a name attribute, which will be a string type, and also a price attribute, which should be a decimal. But in uh, Mongoid, it should be a big decimal because that's the name of the class it uses. Now, Mongoid overrides the model generator, so that's what will be used here when it generates the product model for the scaffolding. So if I open up that file, you can see how to create a Mongoid model. It's just a simple Ruby class that includes a Mongoid document and has field calls for each attribute you want on that model and their type. Now if I visit that Rails app, you can see the scaffolding that was generated is fully functional. I can create a new product and it will just work. There's no need to uh, run any migrations or set up the database. You can see it persists here just fine. One thing I love about working with a schemaless database is its flexibility. Let's say I want to keep track of when a product was released. I could just simply add another field call in the product model here, and let's call it released on, and make the type a date. To see this field in action, I'll change the interface as well, this uh, form. I'm just going to add a released on a text field. Now if you want to use a date select instead of a text field, then uh, you're going to have some issues with Mongoid out of the box. You'll need to add a module to the model to get this working. Uh, you could check out the documentation for details on that, but I generally prefer a text field anyway. So now when I go to edit a product, I have this released on field, which I can just uh, fill in with a date and update the product. And let's see if that date persists, and it does. No need to generate any migrations or run them. Now Mongoid uses active models, so much of what you know from active record will carry over here too, such as attribute accessible. It's always a good idea to set this uh, for security and also validation. So let's say add a validates presence of name on here and a whole lot more. We can try that out quickly by uh, removing this name and updating the product and there's our validation warning. Now one area where Mongoid differs from active record is when querying for records. Let me show you here in the console. I can still call where on a model and pass in some conditions, but uh, Mongoid allows a more complex conditions to be passed in here. I can say where the price is uh, less than or equal to 40, and that should return that one product. Now another way to write this, which I generally prefer, is to use a conditional method on the class directly, such as product.lte, and then set the price to 40 here. That way we can use the Ruby 1.9 hash syntax. Now the object returned by this query call is a mongoid criteria instance, and this is very similar to an active record relation object. So this means we can chain queries together and it will do lazy loading. So let's also find products which have been released within one month ago. And there's a lot more that you could do here. Mongoid's query interface is quite powerful. You can check out the docs for more details on the query interface. Most of that is documented under the butterfly here, which is actually the origin gem, and that is something that Mongoid depends on, so it automatically includes all of this functionality into a Mongoid model. Now another way Mongoid differs from Active Record is through associations. You're able to embed an association into a single document. To demonstrate how this works, I'm going to generate a new model, and I'll call that review because I want users to be able to review products and so I'll give it a content text column. So now we have two models, product and review, and I want our product model to have many reviews. So we could define this association in two different ways. We could do what's called a referenced association, which works very similar to active record. Just say has many reviews. 
But here, I want to demonstrate an embedded association. To define that, instead of has many, I can call embeds many reviews. And then in the review model, I can just call embedded in product. So let's try this out in the console. Interacting with the association works very similar to Active Record. I'll fetch a product first, and we can call reviews.create and make a new review with some content, let's say a great game. So now we have this review, which we can fetch through the product perfectly fine, as you would expect. And you can see we have one review for this product. However, this is an embedded association, so that means all of this review's data is within the product document, not stored as a separate document in MongoDB. So this means if I call review.count, it's going to return zero because there are no review documents. We can only fetch reviews through the product model. And in fact, I can't even create a new review record on its own. It's going to raise an exception because it expects it to exist within a parent document. So whenever you're defining an association in Mongoid, ask yourself, will I need to fetch this record and work with it on its own outside of the parent? If so, then you should use a has many reference association instead of an embedded one. The advantage of an embedded association though is that all the data is right there within one document. It doesn't need to perform separate queries in order to fetch the other associated documents. Next, I want to show you a few additional modules that you might want to consider including with your Mongoid document. One is timestamps, which you can probably tell by the name is similar to the active record functionality. Now when we create or update a product, it's going to include those timestamps. You can see here, it now has created at and updated at attributes. Another cool module is called paranoia. This will do soft delete, so destroying a record won't actually remove it from the database. Let me demonstrate that here. I'll fetch a product, and if I call destroy on this, it's actually just going to update the deleted add attribute. So this means that even though it looks like it's gone, if I try to fetch any of the products, it only shows that one product exists here, but I can restore this given product, and then that count will be back up at two because that product was now marked as not deleted. Now Mongoid even has built-in support for versioning. I won't be covering this here, but check out the documentation for details. It's pretty cool. Now I want to show you one more thing back here in the scaffolding. And notice that the URL for a given product includes this crazy identifier string, but what if you want to change this to something else a little prettier? Now there are a couple of ways we can do this. One option is similar to active record where we can override the toParam method. But here I want to show you another way to do it with Mongoid, and that is to override the underscore ID field. So I'm going to make a new field here called underscore ID and make that of type string. And the key here is to set a default value, and we can set that to a proc, changing it to the name attribute for this given model. And to make this URL friendly, I'm going to call parameterize on this. Oh, and one more thing, I'll uh, convert this to a string just in case the name is nil. So with that in place, let's see what happens when I create a new product. And now that name is part of our URL here because it is the underscore ID attribute of that product. Now there are a couple of gotchas with this approach. One is that when creating a new instance, we should always pass in the name while making the instance because otherwise our ID is going to be an empty string. And if we try to set the name after the fact, then it's still going to be an empty string for that given ID. Also, ensuring the uniqueness of this ID is up to you, you'll probably want to add some kind of validation to ensure it's unique. Well, that's it for this episode on Mongoid. The documentation for this project is really great, so check that out for more information. Also, I recommend you take some time to learn about MongoDB on its own. There's a neat interactive shell right on the site where you can run through a tutorial, and this will give you a better understanding of how Mongoid works. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful.